we pick up where we left off. Um, we're given a rate function. I didn't. So I would maybe like next week, Thursday, I would say. What does that point mean right there? At four hours. Yeah, the rate of snow is 1.2 inches per hour. Let me pause the video so we can meet the need. Okay, here we go. So, well, it's like two times a week he forgets his notes now. What's going on, buddy? Not enough eggs in the morning? Just a bad day. All right, got it. So we've got uh, at four hours, the snow is falling at a rate of 1.2 inches per hour. It doesn't mean that 1.2 inches of snow has fallen thus far. It just means at this time, 1.2 inches per hour is falling at four hours. You can see it continues to increase. So it says consider the concavity of R of T and use it to determine an upper and lower bound uh, for the total snow accumulation over the course of six hours. Oh, boy, what the heck does that even mean? Well, what's happening to the rate? It's getting bigger significantly, isn't it? In fact, if you looked at the graph, Grant, let me know when you're ready to go and I'll pull it up. He'll pass. And you are signed out. Okay, so if we mark this, so I say I make this one, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> and I have hours one, two, three, four, five, six. It, this isn't an exact graph. It's just a rough estimation. I just want to kind of try to get an idea as to uh, you know the accumulation of snow at this time. So at zero, I've got zero. At one, I got 0.1. At two, I've got 0 0.3. At three, I've got 0 0.6. Four, I've got 1.2. Finally, something that seems a little bit more measurable. At five, I've got 2.4. At six, I have 4.8. And you can see the graph goes as such. Concave up or concave down? Concave up, yep. So what we're going to do at this point is we are going to try to estimate, you know, kind of upper bounds and lower bounds, okay? So what's the width of the interval? What's the width of the entire interval that we're looking at right now? Six, right? And one thing that we know is <clears throat> if it was snowing at 4.8 inches per hour for the entire time, the blue box would represent the total amount of snow fallen, or rather six times 4.8. Take out my handy-dandy calculator. Six times 4.8, and I get 28.8. Is that an overestimation or an underestimation? Would you agree that the blue box is a vast overestimation for what the actual area is? Yeah. What's the smallest part on the graph? What's the smallest value? Zero. So if we had a height of zero times six, we would get zero inches. Would you agree that the green box is an underestimation? So that's a, it's a very, very easy way to take the smallest value and the biggest value and multiply by the width to look at just one rectangle, or in this case, two rectangles, and those tell you kind of the, the, the bounds. So we know that if we were to actually find the area and we came up with a value greater than 28.8, we would say, forget it. That's unreasonable, isn't it? And if we came up with a value less than zero, we would say that's unreasonable. Okay? 
Look at what it says here. It says, um, let S of 0 equal 2.4. Use T sub 4 to approximate the amount of snow coverage at time equals 4. Oh, boy, now we're talking about snow coverage. The actual total amount. Do you remember the other day when we talked about this? We said position was equal to, do you remember how we determined that? Position was equal to what? Start plus displacement. So, what is the starting position? It starts with 2.4 inches of snow. 2.4 inches of snow is currently on the ground. Okay? 2.4 plus, how do we figure out displacement? Integral from 0 to, why do you say 4? It says time equals 4 of R of T dt. So we want to figure out the accumulation of snow, the accumulation of snow right here. Okay. Now, we don't have an actual function, do we? We have table values. And they say use T sub 4. Remember what that means? Trapezoidal sum using four subintervals, right? So we want to figure out the trapezoidal sum of this using four subintervals. And I know some of you remember it, some of you don't. We did test on it last unit. Uh, we're going to bring it right back to your memory right now so we can go over it. I know it's really tough, especially too, when we uh, miss days like this. But uh, let's look at the first one right here. Uh, we have 0 to 1 and then 0 to 0 0.1. So we're going we're gonna to make a trapezoid out of it, okay? We'll make a trapezoid out of it. So I have a height of 0, and then I have a height of 0 0.1, right? If I connect that together, this is 0 0.1. What's this length here? This length is 1. Actually just makes a triangle, doesn't it? Could you find that area? What is that area? Two point four plus we're gonna add all these things up. We have one times point one is point one. And then divide it in half I get point zero five. So I'm gonna find the area of this rectangle or this triangle. Take the base times the height, and I divide by two. Let's look at the next one. The next one, I have a height of what? What's this height right here? Point one. What's this height over here? Point three. What's this width? One. So now that's the trapezoid. This is the height. This is the height width. Do you know how to find the area of a trapezoid? Do you remember? Sure. So I do base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. So Base 1 plus base 2, point 0.4 times the height, point 0.4 divided by 2, point 0.2. Two. We'll do one more of the trapezoids together, and then you'll do the last one on your own. What's the height of this trapezoid here? I've got two heights going on, point 0.3 and... 0.6. What's the width? 1. Base 1 is 0.3. Base 2 is 0.6. Adam and Gary get 0.9. Times 1 is 0.9. Divided by 2 is 0.45. You do the last one on your own.
So we've got 2.4 plus uh, 0.05 plus 0.2 plus 0.45 plus 0.9. Did you get 0.9? So this ends up being uh, 0.5 plus 0 0.2 is 0.7 plus 0.9 is 1.6. So I get 2.4 plus 1.6 is 4 inches. So that's how much snow we have at time equals 4. At time equals 4, we have the 2.4, which we started with, plus the 1.6 that we've accumulated. Okay? Great example of an AP question. Letter C, use the table to approximate R prime of 3 and R prime of 4.5. What does R prime mean? The derivative, right? And so we're looking at the derivative of the rate, okay? <clears throat> so as you look at the graph here, is the rate speeding up or is the rate slowing down? The rate's speeding up, right? Okay? If it was like this, if the graph was like this, then the rate would be slowing down, wouldn't it? So the rate's speeding up. But we want to figure we want to approximate that r prime of 3. We can't take the, the derivative of this, can we? Do you remember what we do to try to approximate r prime of 3? Very good. If you consider this, I'll try to do a graphical representation. Some of us got this the first time we did. Some of us didn't. See if you can lean in and get it this time. We've got, uh, we're trying to find the derivative at 3. So we're trying to find the slope at 3. See that? Very difficult to do without a function. So what we could do instead is, wouldn't you agree that if I looked at the slope of the line formed between the, the two points, one in front of it, one behind it, that that would be approximately the same as the black one? Yeah, it sure would. So we'll use the, uh, we'll use the two that are one that's in front of it, one that's behind it. So r prime of 3, it says approximate, so is approximately equal to we would say r of 4 minus r of 2 divided by 4 minus 2. That would give us that slope between those two points, and we would say that that would approximate r prime of 3. What is r of 4? 1.2. What's r of 2? 0.2 divided by 2. 0.3, okay. 1.2 minus 0.3 divided by 2. And I get uh, 0.9 over 2, which is 0.45. What is my label? Inches per hour squared. If you want to do R prime of 4.5, yeah, you try 4 and 5 on your own. Go. So that means that the rate is picking up. It's starting to snow faster. And that's a bad news around here, right? My wife got caught in it on Saturday night. She was headed home from a tournament, basketball tournament in Rochester. Um, she was scared for her life. My daughter was sitting beside her. My daughter started crying. Uh, they were going 20 miles an hour. They couldn't see where they were going. They pulled off the side of the road. My daughter was afraid that they were going to get hit. Uh, my wife was scared. Uh, they had a line of cars come by, and then my wife was able to get in line behind them, and she was able to kind of just follow the pack and get home eventually, so it was a good deal. But uh, very disappointed, very disappointed. Um, the Rochester Basketball Association sent out a notice saying that they decided to cancel Sunday's games because enough teams said that they weren't going to play on Sunday. Why does it have to be that enough teams decided not to play? Why can't it be we're going to cancel because it is horrible conditions? But that's a problem with associations. They don't step up and do that. 
all the activities here were canceled, right? Did we not shut everything down, right? And that's that's why high schools try to do the right thing. We try to say we're going to look at the weather patterns. We're going to try to do the right thing and shut things down. But all the associations, they just let everybody everybody stand on their own and figure it out. And that's not the right thing to do. So um, our team decided to leave early. I was proud of them for doing that. I wish it would have left a little bit earlier than that. I was at a different tournament with Micah. We were coming home in it as well, but we got home a little bit sooner. So, but uh, got to be safe out there. And at the end of the day, it's just a basketball game. Don't want to don't want to put as much importance on that as you do your safety and your livelihood. Okay. Here's my two cents. What does one fourth integral one to five R of T DT mean? Use units in your explanation. Use the right hand sum to approximate one over four integral one to five R of T DT. Get rid of the one fourth. What does that thing mean? This, this is the accumulation factor, right? The integral accumulates, it gathers. So this means the amount of snow that has fallen between the hours of 1 and 5. Exactly. Remember what happens if we put the 1 fourth in front of it? Where do we get the 1 fourth? Yeah, that's the width of the interval, right? That's 1 over 5 minus 1. And what that tells us is the average value of the function or the average value of the rate. So the integral from 1 to 5 times 1 over 4 r of t dt is the average rate at which the snow has been falling. from time equals 1 to time equals 5 hours. This is a very classic AP exam question. Just about guarantee you're going to get one like this. You see it now. We'll practice it again later. First time I answered a question like this on the AP exam, and I, I never took it. First time I took it was when I was preparing for the class uh, to teach you guys. But um, I left out the 1 and the 5. They want you to put the 1 and the 5 in there. They want you to tell that it's from time equals 1 to time equals 5 hours. Okay? So that's the average rate. So we want to actually calculate that. Well, the 1 fourth times is easy. It says in order to calculate this, we are supposed to use the right-hand sum to approximate. So I'm going to look at that guy right up here. I'm going to use the right-hand sum to approximate from 1 to 5. We're going from 1 to 5. So it looks like I have four rectangles I'm going to gather. 1, 2, 3, 4. What is the width of each rectangle? 1. Multiply by the heights. Where do I evaluate the first height? Do I evaluate it at 1 or do I evaluate it at 2? Why 2? Because it's on the right-hand side. So 0 0.3 plus, plus 1.2 plus 2.4. Add all those up. I get 0 0.9 plus 1.2 is 2.1 plus 2.4 is 4.5. So the right-hand sum is 4.5. So we end up with 1 fourth times 4.5. Point two five times four point five, and I get one point one two five. One point one two five what? Which is it? Inches per hour, or inches per hour squared. It's inches per hour. And the reason why is it says you're determining the average value of the rate function. Look at your rate function right here. Does it look like between these two spots? that the average might be about one inch per hour? Sure, yeah. And so there we have it. Good work. Last example, flip it over. Anybody know what time we get out of here?
35 or 05. I think, I think we're 05. I think we can make it. Let C prime T be the line tangent below or line of the graph below. Let it represent the rate at which customers are being served while purchasing music on an online store. Do you guys buy music on an online store? You just steal it? Okay, very good. All right, C prime T is measured in customers per minute. Okay, what is an overestimate for the number of customers served over the course of the first eight minutes, and what's an underestimate? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this is C prime of T, customers per minute. Remember how I'll calculate the overestimate. Very good. Rebecca's got it. She says find the highest highest value, which is uh, five. So I get eight times five, which is 40 customers. How do I do the underestimate? What's the smallest value? It is zero. So eight times zero is zero customers. Everybody clear about the overestimate, the underestimate? Because eight is the width of the interval. Second number is the height. What is the average rate at which C double prime is increasing? Oh my gosh. What is the average rate at which C double prime is increasing? What is C double prime? The derivative of C prime. The derivative of C prime. Can we find the exact derivative of C prime? Yeah, like if you want to know the exact derivative of C prime at 1, we could do that, right? Um, at 2, could you do it at 2? It's not differentiable at 2, is it? It's got a corner. Could you do it at 3? No. What's the rate of change at 4? 0. How about 5? 6? Can't do 7? 1, right? It's asking for the average over the entire interval. And so we just want to look at the slope over the entire interval. We want to look at that. That represents the average rate of change. And we can do that. That's no big deal. We're going to say C prime of 8 minus C prime of 0 divided by 8 minus 0. What is C prime of 8? It is 5. What's C prime of 0? 0 divided by 8. So I get 5 over 8. What do we measure C prime in? Customers per minute. So C double prime will be customers per minute squared. So the rate at which we're serving customers is increasing, right? Final question. What does one eighth zero to eight C prime of T or uh, C of C prime T DT mean? This is straight off of our last example. Remember what the one eighth means in front? Average value of the of the rate function. Exactly. One over eight integral zero to eight C prime of T dt is the average value of the rate at which the customers are being served. It says calculate the exact value of one eight zero to eight C prime of D C prime T D T. That means we have to find how how would we find that? What is that represented by this guy up here? What does the integral of C prime of T D T mean when you look at this picture? It's the area. It's the whole area. It's it's all this stuff right here. 
That's what we want to calculate. And we're going to multiply it by 1 eighth. Let's do the easy one first. What's the area of this guy right here? 9. Can we block that one off? Great. Welcome. A red pass. We like those. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Very important person right here. Here you go. Thank you for helping us work through that. All right. We've got nine. How many sit right here? Six. See the complicated math that we're doing right now? Oh, yeah, I should. From time equals zero to time equals eight. Look at that. My first mistake I ever made, and I continue to make it again on this type of problem. Okay, well, how about this? What's the area of this guy right here? Yeah, plus two, so I did that one. Um... I got this guy, which is 1, right? And then, wouldn't these two triangles together just make 2? Yeah? Yeah. And so that's all of them. 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 1 is 16, plus 2 is 18, plus 2 is 20. 20 what? What did we just find? Very good, yeah. So it's 20 customers we've served. But you want to figure the, you want the average value. So 1 eighth times 20 is 5 halves, 2.5 customers per minute. That's the average value of the rate function. Very good. Well, I thought the bell would go by now. Guess I was wrong, huh? There you go. All right. So uh, you are now caught up to be able to finish this worksheet, and we're ready to move on to bigger and better things tomorrow. Tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. It's only a day away. Stay safe on those roads.